Yes, sir, we are live. Welcome to another episode of ScoutCast. My name is Rolf Suet and I'm your host. Darian Radenkovic, a man of storytelling, currently acting as chief business developer at Vidi Vaca, creating meaningful stories for the digital generation. Before that, until a few months ago, he was director of education at Brainster, a tech education company on a mission to help people future-proof their careers by learning in-demand tech skills. And for many years, he worked as head of marketing at digital marketing agencies, insurance companies, as well as teaching assistant at a university on communication, mass media, public relations. Darian is outcome driven and output focused executive and business marketing strategist. That's a difficult words for me to say, but uh, it's going okay, I think, with strong experience yeah. in growing teams <laughs> and empowering them to deliver results across all channels. He's passionate for learning and knowledge sharing and always willing to test new approaches while leveling the arguments with data. And that is something that I like. So hopefully during this episode, uh, he can argument with a lot of data for us to, uh, yeah, to verify. And I think it will be pretty cool. Uh, it seems that a lot revolves around stories, marketing, education, and all this kind of stuff. So uh, welcome, Darian. Yeah, uh, nice to meet you. Thank you for this great introduction. It sounds a bit like, you know, I'm a jack of all trades. And I hope not a master of none, but we will see through the discussion today. I think that yeah. we have a lot of interesting stories to share. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah we're going to gonna be focusing mostly on the, yeah, we're going to be mostly focusing on the education side of things, right? <clears throat> and yeah. that is also what you are uh, doing at this moment in your, well, in your, yeah. in your work. Yes, absolutely. My work generally uh, uh, revolves around marketing, education, storytelling, as you said. Uh, I think uh, nowadays with the mm -hmm. uh, evolving, evolving of, of the digital uh, industries, uh, I think all of these things are pretty much interconnected. So doing one thing without doing yeah. the other is pretty much impossible. So, yeah. All right. Yeah, so we're going to be uh, having a nice discussion about that. But before we do, I have two more guests by my side here, my wingman for today. Uh, Panche Gastiovsky, yeah. welcome. Hey. Thank you all. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. Now, uh, interested in this topic. Uh, we've been uh, discussing with Darian for quite a while now to uh, have a discussion on education, future of education, uh, jobs, yeah. how jobs are changing. And, uh, all, things like that. all right. Well, nice to have you aboard again. And of course, Sylvester, sponsor of this uh, today's episode. Again, again. <laughs> Looking forward to the episode. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on uh, on the education system, uh, Darian. I have some personal frustrations with the education system here in Netherlands. So uh, curious. Okay, yeah. so let's maybe. Uh, who doesn't? Who doesn't? Maybe we should start. Thing. Yeah. Well, exactly. So that might be a good way to start out, right? So, Darian, do you have any frustrations with the current education systems? Well, actually, yes, absolutely. You know, uh, because uh, we live in a post-communist country and. Uh, Education was uh, always one of the I don't know the main the, the, the main uh, topics uh, for discussion. But nowadays, uh, as uh, we enter this transition phase, you know, uh, and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of industries, including the education, uh, fell behind the, the the development in the in the Western world. So uh, we are uh, frustrated uh, about a lot of things, but the education uh, is one of the. the Things that people are people are here mo mo mostly frustrated about because you know uh, it was considered that uh, former Yugoslavia had a, a specific and very 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 good educational system, but nowadays uh, our educational system uh, uh, lacks to, to, to provide uh, uh, skills that are uh, appropriate to, to make uh, young people you know uh, 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 prepared for the job market and the demands of, of the job market. So um, most of mm. it lies in the, you know, uh, that's a problem that it, it's a global one. But uh, uh, yeah. in the, the countries uh, as ours uh, that are not that much developed, uh, it's really a problem because uh, the digital transformation goes uh, very, very fast and the, the education uh, uh, lacks the means to, to uh, keep the, the, you know, but, to keep But going should education... Along. But shouldn't uh, shouldn't education really be focused on the job market? Because I always thought that education should be more about you know teaching young people to, to think for themselves, to really be you know inquisitive, you know trying to figure out things. Like, does it have to actually connect to the job market? Yeah, absolutely. So one way to uh, maybe to create a more more uh, sustainable education uh, when it uh, when if, if if we focus on the job market. Yeah, absolutely. One of the the ways to, to maybe handle this problem is to uh, 
try to create a generation of students that are the most problem solved. So mm. that's the way because uh, uh, in a way maybe maybe uh, you, you have a point here because uh, it can be tiring just chasing the digital transformation and doing yeah. all of these changes in the education and in the way you, you think, you, you teach and everything and maybe uh, trying to, to, to create a problem solvers that can, you know, uh, find themselves uh, suitable in any position with any technology that emerges uh, in the time is one of the options. But uh, nevertheless, I think that uh, the education generally lack, lacks this uh, dynamic of change that, that, is, yeah. that is necessary. Okay, and so Sylvester, you mentioned that you had some frustrations with education? Well, I think the lack of change that Darian just described, I think that's typical for the education system, right? Uh, we've also had clients that, that, well, in this case, deliver software to the education system. Mm -hmm. And what you see happening is there's, there's usually tenders involved, right? So people need to get a tender approved and then to get the contract and then they're implementing the new system, then they're going to work with the new system. And in the end, you spend around 10 years before they can iterate again and adapt again to changing environment. At least that's what I see happening. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that I think is just, it, it's outdated, it doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to teach the same thing over and over again anymore. And so the more traditional means of education that we knew existed uh, up until, let's say, the 20, 30, 30, 30 years ago, when most of our parents went to go maybe to school, you go to high school, then university, and you're bound to, you know, you finish university, and you're bound maybe to be mm -hmm. uh, job fit. Now, generally, also, if you take a university of four years, by the time when you start, by the time you end, like the job market has already switched and transitioned, and there may be things you said are new. Four or five years ago, when you get out of it, it's no longer there. So the transformation goes very, very, very quick. So what I was wondering, so because I also worked as a um, uh, teaching assistant uh, some years back, and then more recently you were part of a brainstorm. And maybe you can tell, tell a bit more mm -hmm. what brainstorm was, what the idea behind it, behind it was. Yeah. And you were um, uh, director of education there. How has education shifted in this period of time? Like, was that like 10, 10 50 years uh, different, I think? Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, when I was working as a teaching assistant at uh, formal mm -hmm. education, uh, uh, I was working at a private university that gained uh, pretty much popularity because it was one of the, let's say, easier to, to, to finish. Uh, so, at the job market, now the diploma was one of the main, uh, you know, uh, uh, things that you, you mm -hmm. want to have uh, in order to find a job. And uh, 10 years later, uh, the skill set is the, 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 the only thing that, that uh, new companies, especially companies that work in the field of uh, coding, marketing, digital, uh, data science, uh, the, your skill set is the, the main thing that, that they, they need. So uh, the demand uh, uh, in mm -hmm. the education itself shifted from this yeah. diploma chasing thing to uh, skill set uh, chasing and uh, the boot camps, the uh, brain set, our company was uh, one of the, the, the uh, fastest growing startups in, in Macedonia just because uh, we uh, kind of bridged this gap of uh, uh, the skills that, 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 were, uh, that young people were missing to, to find jobs that are, that are uh, considered And what was an example of one of general. these skill sets? Uh, like a so, like specific uh, Microsoft Outlook or something? Yeah. Or? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, uh, this was this, this were boot camps that lasted from six months to, to one year, and they they're preparing you to, to become a junior in the coding right. industry uh, as a front end developer, uh, full stack developer, uh, uh, maybe a Q and A mm -hmm. uh, uh, specialist, uh, QA specialist, uh, then digital marketer, uh, okay. graphic yeah. designer, UI okay. designer, etc. etc. So these were all all, all uh, skills that uh, uh, we registered that. There is a huge demand at the, yeah. at the job job market, but not enough uh, uh, young people that, that have this skill set. It, so it was like you know uh, something that that naturally comes as, as a, a development of the of the market, the job yeah. market and the education. So market. so we, we we touched briefly that um, okay the more traditional uh, means of operating, uh, more traditional universities they are a bit inert uh, to change. Um, they are not really adaptive enough with uh, at least in this domain of um, of industries and then so this uh, type of uh, companies uh, like uh, brainstorm like filling, filling the gap in the void uh, how do you see this this developing in the future like will what would is there still room for universities 
Yeah, I think absolutely there is. So it, it's not a binary choice, you know, either university, either bootcamp. The traditional education uh, has a lot, a lot, uh, you know, uh, things that, that should stay the way they are, but a lot of things should uh, change. So there is, we were, we were you know, just uh, uh, missing some, some aspects of the traditional education. So we find, at Brainster, we find this uh, a, a way of development that was uh, very, very imminent to us. And it was uh, something that is called uh, applied studies. So it's also a uh, high education. Uh, you get the same mm -hmm. uh, degree, the same diploma, uh, but uh, here you don't have to uh, to have this, uh, you know, academic professors that are not in the industry. So uh, the, the 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 law in the education allows you to have uh, professors from the industry. So uh, I can call guys like you that are professionals in their area, based uh, in business, in uh, coding, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and they can be um, the people that will teach the the, the, uh, the the new skill set. So that's something that now you build a curricula that also resembles the, the traditional curricula, but you, you are not in this frame frame academic framework that, uh, that doesn't give you the possibility of agility. So if you have an industry-based curricula that you can change uh, with, with agility, now you can yep. find the best of the, the two worlds. So, this so is again, the where is the room of the traditional universities to who are mer whose curriculum tend to be overbloated, um, with who are taught by uh, professors from academia who, well, some of them might have practice uh, in actual business sector, but a lot of them maybe not, and who take years and years, and who and where tuitions are much much higher. Uh, where is the added benefit of, of doing a, a traditional university then? At least, I'm not talking about all of the, all the industries, I'm more talking about yeah. the digital mm -hmm. industry. Well, from my perspective, there were a few courses in my uh, education that mm -hmm. I still value. That was about computer organization, so how does a computer actually work inside? So you understand how it works, how much you can do with it. Uh, but then the other aspects were, yeah. you know, for instance, we had a class called uh, Software Engineering. And basically, it was uh, following the Java book. Uh, learning yeah. how to write Java and how to write threads and what a mutex is, I think that was useless. Yeah, yeah, it was absolutely useless. You could just do that online, right? Mm -hmm. You have a problem, you're solving it. Well, what we know, what we experience is that most of the work, most of the learning, you actually do while you work. Yeah. So everything, everything, most of the things that I've been taught, I've actually learned on my own or at work. And uh, mm -hmm. you, university kind of gave you some basis for, for things. Um, but if you are actually directly taught by people from the from the, from the business from for which you are hoping to work with in, in the sector, I think that bridging that gap and that effort to learn it brings it sort of closer to you already in that uh, period of learning uh, and preparing for the, for the job market. But but won't that like you know educating people for the job market like create you know a lot of boring generations where everyone has the same skill set and like the, the innovation goes okay. away? Could be, yeah. That's, that could be. And what can, what what yeah. is your take on that, then, Darian? Like, how can you how can you combat something like that? Because you do want mm -hmm. to have yeah. like the great minds who totally yeah. think outside of the mm -hmm. box, right? Absolutely. So, uh, first of all, what Sylvester said, you need a traditional education, education maybe for some of the of the uh, uh, to give you base. So we were with our boot camp, we developed uh, mm -hmm. some programmers, we developed like coders. But we could not uh, deliver a software engineers, you know. So for that, you have a, to need a, you need a stronger base. So I had the same problem as a marketing uh, lead instructor for marketing. Yes, I created a digital marketer that can uh, mm -hmm. easily fit uh, at the market. But the, the the part of the communication, communication strategy, brand values, uh, developing uh, you know just this communication strategy that is much wider than the digital marketing strategy. It was something that that we lacked, so that's why we decided to uh, uh, maybe uh, just uh, have this approach that yeah. is combines the traditional education uh, uh, in terms of applied studies. So that that uh, on the first take. Uh, and the second aspect of the question: uh, How do you create um, uh, maybe curricula that is adapted to 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 any single uh, maybe student mm -hmm. and not fit one size fit them all? Uh, you have the answer if the, maybe in the cooperation of the uh, 
biggest university in, in the world with a platform for MOOC. It's not yeah. just uh, the, the scaling of the programs, because now you can find these programs much cheaper on, the, on these platforms, not uh, only about some of the degrees and uh, micro-credentials, but also it's about the data points, the, the huge uh, data that uh, the, the MOOC generates. So based on this data, you can create an individual, some kind of uh, 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 maybe curriculum uh, uh, or maybe uh, do some adjustments based on their performance because you yeah. can measure much better the real engagement when you uh, when you are full digital so this this gives you some opportunity and when you introduce the algorithms uh, as on are introduced on the social media now in the education i'm sure that we can maybe find some approach where we can create some you know, uh, approach that is not one to talk right. individual based on, on this uh, AI uh, data center. Yeah. That massive online uh, uh, course with uh, platforms like Udemy, like so you, you uh, mentioned uh, that uh, world renowned universities are posting their own courses there, and you can also create your own criteria, your own uh, sorry, yeah. curriculum, and get like a micro. Yeah. Uh, micro credentials? Micro credentials, yeah. So, yeah, it's like, uh, uh, as I was talking previously, the, the diploma as a concept, mm -hmm. uh, like this monolithic curricula, is not that much uh, on a value today. So, you, you have to, you know, maybe collect this micro credential. That, that, that's everything. Uh, if you see on LinkedIn and, and everywhere, people trying to. To, new some, uh, to, to learn some new skills, new, uh, create some new skill, uh, skill sets, uh, uh, programmers are learning data, marketers are learning data, uh, UX designers are learning something else, etc. etc. So uh, I think that uh, some of the um, university not just offer, not, not, not just offer their programs on, on this platform, but also uh, they uh, try to motivate their students to take some of the external uh, courses and uh, yeah. uh, become part of their, their, okay. their skill set. And so I was wondering... Uh, the so the, the monolithic curricula will, will, right. will, but like will when, be when, dissected yeah, smaller. But so when I can like and follow online combine. classes and like put my own curriculum together, like I, ca I cannot become a doctor in this way, right? Like I cannot just, you know, go to Brainster or Udemy or any other university and say like, hey, you know, I'm going to follow a couple of online courses on this and that. So does this only fit the, you know, software engineering IT part of the educational spectrum? Or do you also see it applying to, I don't know, maybe uh, law or uh, or any of that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, well, I guess that it would be more difficult to apply it on some of the, uh, of the segments of education, but I guess that the, the digitalization of education is, is necessary and it's imminent and it will happen. Uh, so uh, it, it's very mm -hmm. important because a, a lot of uh, young people, a lot of people uh, business oriented, uh, they saw this opportunity, it was like a blue ocean, you know. Uh, uh, there was this gap when you fill it with informal education, uh, there are a lot of money to be made and sometimes yeah. you lack you know, and the job market is hungry, and you don't have to de 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 uh, deliver strong quality in order to get people uh, employed, because the companies are yeah. looking for like literally anyone yeah. that that can uh, sometimes type two lines of code. You know, so this this is not a good approach. So you need uh, uh, maybe a partnership between between the academia, because the the, the bases are in the academia. So the academia and the, the, the practitioners should listen one to another. I had this opportunity to, to, to see the, 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 the both roles, and I know that uh, the right. one uh, part of the story cannot survive without the other if you want to yeah. develop, uh, deliver a strong quality of people. So if they work together, I guess that this will be okay. applicable to, to much more. I think the university is four or five years, maybe, right? Mm -hmm. Give or take. So, uh, Yes, you can get, get universities closer to companies or to yes. businesses and to learn what they need, but they're still working cohorts, right? So they're always, at least that's what I've seen, they're always following the train, basically. So, yeah, the next cohort, they might implement what business partners is now requesting, but the curriculum for the first five years is already set. So they won't change that because, well, regulations, law, whatever. So, yep. I don't think you can teach specific technologies or specific uh, methods, maybe. Using that way, if you want to be close to the business uh, mm -hmm. side of it, 
Well, I mean, you're not going to develop uh, scientists with uh, the informal education. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's about well, the well, scientists. Well, what is science? How do you do this? Stuff? How do you how do you validate? What what is a scientific way? I think that's the part you want to learn, but not per se. How do I what do I research? Correct. But absolutely, this is one of the biggest problems of the traditional education that you cannot easily change the curriculum. That that's the biggest problem because you need to like three semesters at least to to implement something new, and you are all in the technology field and you know what kind of technologies can emerge in a year and a half. So in marketing, in my field, there is, I don't know, mm -hmm. TikTok that has like 2 billion uh, users and uh, year, uh, one year ago it, it yeah. almost it, it, it was non-existent. So if they create a monetization now, we, we all need to know what, what, what this kind of platform and how, how do we use it. And we don't have but, two but years. students so need to, in two years maybe students need to know what they sign up for, for right I mean really you cannot say like I'm gonna do this education and in four or five years I'll know where I will be at like it's I think it's hard to, for a school to be saying like well come to us and we'll teach you stuff that companies will want but we cannot really tell you upfront what it is because the world changes every year like that's really hard to convince someone to come study right or you think it's actually a selling point well yes but that that's a no, the, the situation mm -hmm. is, is actually like that, you know, like 65% yeah. uh, of the children in the elementary school will work okay. in field that is non-existent today. That's a fact, you know. So uh, anyone that, 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 that uh, sells okay. something and say, I will know that this will work in four years, no, it, it doesn't, you know. So the situation is like that, but uh, the responsibility yeah. is uh, on the side of the education, you know, to create an applicable curriculum. So, that, that that's why we, we can maybe go back to yeah. this part that you need to create a problem solver. You you need to try to to, to make people yeah. uh, you know uh, learn how to how to solve problems. If they know how to solve problems, they will manage to, to find yeah. themselves. Uh, yeah, that's for that problem. You need more long term approach, more unit term approach. I don't know. I think it can be way shorter than four years. Could be maybe. It doesn't really make sense to me, and I think this already starts at elementary school. Yeah, correct. How do you learn? So, well, it's it's not mm -hmm. it's not yeah how they learn. How they learn is maybe one of the, the so we can go to the methodology now. You know, you need to remove the professor from the center of the education in the university. You need you need to do that because now uh, uh, we are we are talking not generally for the education, but let's stick to the uh, education that sure. uh, uh, yep. applied to te technology in general to digital skills. Okay, so if we talk about that, you need to remove the professor because most of the things uh, that we do today as a professionals we do uh, with solving problems. And uh, if you don't solve problems through your education, and 90% if 90 of your education is based on uh, the professor just reading from the book to you, I think that that, that, that missed opportunity to, to create a problem solver. So this is, that there was one uh, interesting experiment, uh, one scientist. Hole in the wall? Yeah, yeah okay. the experiment is called hole in the wall. So he went in one, uh, yeah, one village in India, where uh, there is literally no internet, no technology, nothing. And he put uh, a computer with the internet uh, in a wall and he just put uh, like a glass in front. So the people, uh, the, the children uh, could use the computer but not break. And they managed to find all of the functionalities of the computer. They learned themselves how to browse. They learned themselves everything. So in the second part of this approach, he was just uh, acting as, as he is saying uh, the grandma. The grandma is the, the person that says, I, I bet you cannot do this. So he was coming uh, in a month or, or some, some period of time and he was saying, okay, I bet you cannot find, uh, I don't know, uh, the code of, yep. uh, I don't know, the DNA or something like that, something that is crazy scientific uh, thing to, to explore. And uh, he, he was coming back like in a month and they were all set. And uh, how did you, how did you do? Well, we find something, but not not everything. And when they showed him what what did they find, it was like some scientific research or something. So uh, it, this is a kind of proof that uh, uh, you need to uh, redesign the, the the methodology of of, of of the. And first of all, you need to remove the the, the professor uh, from the center of the universe. Not 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 in the, not that they 
are not needed yet, but they need to so, be more curators. Yeah, and so instead of spoon feeding the information and then uh, testing the uh, students, then, uh, a professor should just say like, hey, I'm facilitating here, this is the challenge, absolutely. you guys go figure it out. Uh, that reminds me that it sounds like I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah man, it sounds like work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is that also your vision of the future of education like rather than you know giving students stacks and stacks of books to read and like okay i'm gonna quiz you guys on this it's more like okay uh what what do you want to learn what do you want to know well, well yes yeah definitely because you know there is one huge catalysator here in the whole process that's the internet and that's the approach uh, of the to the information you know 30 years ago you don't uh, uh, mm -hmm. You don't have any information outside of the, the, the your, your the book, the textbook, you know, and you cannot search it. Maybe you can go to the library, but you can maybe yeah. find something, maybe not. There are no no not hyperlinks in the in the book. You know. uh, but but nowadays uh, the, the approach uh, to the to the information uh, it has its downside, you know. Yeah. You, know, you you will need how to you know to uh, to filter yeah. the information. So that's why the, the the media literacy is one of the uh, uh, most important skills that you can teach people now, uh, uh, students nowadays. Nowadays, but uh, in general, now uh, the authority, mm -hmm. uh, the unquestioned authority of the textbook and the professor, it's I think it's the, the, the thing from the past. And I don't, you know, it's not this so rebel way. So they become the bottleneck. Uh, 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 um, but but uh, I think that I think that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they will be searching for information, and they will be looking for information. They will learn uh, by by themselves. They will. I had these situations. Uh, people working in some uh, aspects of marketing that that were very lucrative. You know, uh, uh, creating a, a fake uh, site, a website for for uh, fake mm -hmm. news uh, uh, on the elections when the Trump was elect elected, and you know they they were making like a lot a lot of money. So. For me, that's not marketing as I know it and as I teach it, but I can learn from them uh, invaluable things about the functioning of maybe Google Ads platform, AdSense platform, and Facebook, etc. So I cannot uh, uh, see myself as the, the ultimate yeah. authority on, on things when I have uh, someone that is playing the system, even though he's in the gray side of, of, of the system, but he managed to find information that for me was you know, something that I cannot do, I cannot try, I cannot test. I'm working from Coca-Cola for some big companies and I cannot you know just put something and try whether Facebook will block me or no yeah so you know this this uh, young people the students they will get the knowledge themselves so the, the teacher will have to reinvent his, his authority yeah, but not now, based now you're on pointing to the teacher and and it, it actually information. starts with the whole curriculum yeah. of a university I don't think there should be a fixed curriculum maybe a few ideas or central concepts that you want to teach but this started actually in the Industrial Revolution. Have you seen that YouTube movie by Sir Ken Robinson? I should really look it up. But it's a great explanation of where no, it all I started, right? But them, basically, but you get a batch of people every year that know the same stuff. And it was great yeah. in the industrial world, right? Because all people know the same stuff. You might be good at math, okay, you're doing that. You might be good in manual labor, you're doing that. That's about what they needed. And now we need different kinds of people, basically. Yeah, yeah. We will be experimenting with one thing. Uh, uh, it's called a side track. So, Brenter, you know, as I, I mm -hmm. told you, we are creating this uh, applied studies curriculum that will last for three years. So, it's not a short uh, period of time. And but along with the regular curricula, we are doing a digital platform where you have uh, mm -hmm. this side track that enables you something that is called T-shaped learning. That means that if I start with programming and I, I find a, a field or a subfield that interests, uh, that, that uh, you know, generates a lot of interest for me, I can go on the digital platform and I can start learning in this field. Like if this is the curriculum, this is the T-shaped learning where I go in depth in something that I, I find uh, 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 very interesting and maybe useful. So we will give the, the, the students freedom just to roam uh, along the curricula and we will give them enough resources to maybe go uh, uh, on one site and uh, become specialists. But we are doing this side track with the companies 
that, that are uh, maybe have some uh, special technologies that are working. Maybe that this is a company, the only one that works with this kind of technology. And then create this, this content, these side courses, uh, and when the students, it, it's beneficial for, for the both sides. Students are learning more and more in-depth in one field that they are interested, and the companies can recruit the students. So this way, if you think that after the second year, you are good to go, uh, and maybe you don't want to, to become a software engineer and know all of the things, mm. it's enough that you find the technology that, 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 that fits you, okay, you drop here. It's counterintuitive in terms of financial benefit, etc., and, etc., and et but uh, in general, I think that this is the future of, of education. At least one pet that we. How are you going to? How are you going to do? Um, yeah, I think that we will be pioneers uh, in, in this. Accreditation that if people are really flexible. Is there a way to do it? Okay. Okay. Yeah, the main the yeah the main track the okay. main track is the one that is accredited. Accredit. This, it, this yeah. is something that people but, will do yeah. on their own. It's not prerequisite. So the, the, the thing that you guys ha, ha, have done with Brainster and stuff about them. the whole education is because the situation in, in in Macedonia in your case was as it was. Do you think it's also applicable to like for example here in the Netherlands or maybe like you have these big renowned universities in England, right? Uh, like. Does it also apply there, or is it because like society is is vastly different than you know where you're from? It it might work in a different way, or there will be more resistance, or it will take longer. What do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It yeah, it will have a uh, big difference right. because in our society, absolutely, it can work because nothing else works. Most of the the. the uh, the things that are established here in the system, they don't work as well as they should. But I guess that in the developed countries, the education uh, uh, take yeah. care of some of these problems that we were discussing today. And I think that, but uh, also uh, there you have the problem of the accessibility maybe of the education and the, the, right. the price of the, the, the studies on the university that they can afford to, you know, they have these huge laboratories, they have these workspaces, they have innovation centers, they have everything. So I think you're pretty much covered if you have this yeah, but MIT you know, you said, I think that tuition you're covered with the, with the are a big of the, of the um, border for people to, 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 to get across. So in essence, these alternative yeah. forms of education are democratizing education for people who cannot who cannot do it. Yeah, but if you have if, if you're if you're if you're an employee or Absolutely. an employer, I mean, and you okay. can choose with someone who has, I don't know, like a Yale yes, degree and, uh, versus some guy who who followed a lot of Udemy courses, like do you think there's even there's even gonna be a competition there? Uh, are you gonna well, I'm hoping that you're hiring somebody from, from Yale and Udemy for different positions. I would hope that. Why? Yeah, absolutely. But but in this specific position in the time, as the job market is, is uh, 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 positioned now, there are a lot of openings for a lot of jobs, and you cannot fill them with the with the people that you have on the university. So uh, we have like uh, in Macedonia, this number are, are small, but like we we mm -hmm. uh, have a lack of uh, like ten times more uh, right. students are needed. Or ten times more uh, positions are open in programming and digital skills. Yeah, so my example then, doesn't really uh, apply because are, my example uh, doesn't really apply uh, because there is no competition. You, you know, so the like companies just need people. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So that's why I mean, like you would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There is no competition. Yeah. yeah. Yes. For now. For now. If, you, if somebody finishes like high end university, maybe you would hope, maybe they gain more knowledge at more on a scientific level. Yeah. It, Okay, more knowledge, I, I, that's the trick, right? If they might be more trained in how to get more knowledge or how to learn Perhaps. faster or how to discover things, that I would appreciate. But if a guy says, yeah, but I don't know how to do this and I'll do it on my own, that's also valuable. So I, and to me, that, that piece of paper that I finished this course or I finished this university has way less value over the last, well, 10 years, I think. At least in our sector. Yeah, we stopped using it, yeah. it doesn't matter anymore. No. Of course, I want to know what did you do and how did you solve it, but the technologies or the Certification yeah. used to make it happen? No, not relevant to me at least. But yeah, but uh, uh, in society as ours that went through, through this transition, 
uh, we have a great problem with public administration. The public administration is massive, right? And it's a uh, you know like it's a tool for the political parties. If you have a lot of people in public administration, you have a lot of voters, so nobody wants to get rid of administration. But mm -hmm. in public administration, it's not something that a young uh, person would like to work uh, at because they're not well paid and the, like you know this. Uh, uh, there, there is no room for, for uh, going forward with, with learning, with salary and everything and everything. So uh, most of them just uh, try to uh, reskill, uh, 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 purchase some uh, or find some uh, uh, course that uh, right. that can give them digital uh, skill set and they can start working Climb in the, the marketing ladder. agency. Yeah. So the salary is not big, but you can uh, uh, from here on you can build a career. And in the public administration, there is no room to do so. It's a, it's a, what we did. It's a, 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 like we yeah. opened a door for a, a lot of people. They uh, were stuck in their careers. Uh, uh, absolutely, it's something that now you know. It's it's a thing that maybe yes, they're not the top one percent, two percent. We didn't create software engineers, but we and solved so, a huge problem. For, so I was I was, I was wondering because the um, in, the country and it, it, in my eyes, this also really might worried. lead to some form of corruption or like perversion, maybe even because you're uh, educating young people to you know do specific uh, to get specific knowledge that companies would want. And if you say like, yeah, there's just this huge amount of positions that are open that companies are, are looking to hire people, I can imagine that companies might start, you know, paying these these educational institutes for like, hey, you know, I need you guys to exactly teach this specific thing for me. And, you know, once you've mm -hmm. taught these students that I need you to bring them to me so I can so I can hire them, like totally maybe uh, ruining other companies mm -hmm. out there that might also be in yeah. dire need of, of people with the same skill set. Okay. Is, is, is anything like that already uh, are happening, like corruption mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that? And mm -hmm. how do you deal with that? Yeah, not a corruption, but yeah, we, we have some offers, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, uh, we were thinking well, about it's, it's uh, creating a system where you can invest in, in uh, future, future employees, you know, and we are ready to, I think it's a fair trade uh, in yeah. terms of Yes, there are people coming, okay, just find me something and get me out of this uh, job that I'm, I'm working right now. If it's better yep. paid, it's great. If there are opportunity for, you know, uh, going higher, higher in the career, that's great. So I'm not asking where do you stand. So I yeah, think so it's, it's a not fair necessarily a bad the, thing right the, now, the, the right? But it, it might, it might be. It's, the, but it's not a new thing. thing it's not a new thing as well. Uh, okay. uh, I remember my father who went to university 50 years ago. Uh -huh. Yes. He was yes. a student from a, from a company who was like, okay, hey, we see a huge potential in you. We're going to, you know, um, pay your you, tuition pay your tuition or whatever. Yeah. And then you come like work with us for uh, after you graduate yeah, yeah. for two years, right? So that's not necessarily a bad bad thing. Yeah, and, I agree. Uh, and yeah. uh, you also have now also happening in the Netherlands, a bunch of uh, companies uh, that are maybe slightly maybe different model than what we discussed because we already went through this. But they also look for people who want to change careers and actually even pay them salaries while they're being trained mm -hmm. and then they make agreements with companies where these people go, go to work for companies. Yeah. Essentially fulfilling that gap, that need in the in the market, but also helping people okay make improve their their personal lives. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah we had something that was called like opportunity fund where companies put some money for the talent students to, to Go on our boot camps, and yeah. after that, they employ them and uh, they repay the, the. They don't repay the debt, but they fill in the opportunity form so the other other yes. students can can use it. So, but also as as I said, this is a, a like a quick fix uh, to the to the uh, problems that we have in the society. But it's not a long term fix. That's why we are pivoting uh, a, a bit more yeah. towards the, not academia but applied studies and a bit long term. Uh, study. So, but we are open to experimenting with, with different things, for, uh, di 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 different kind of uh, things. So, for example, we are uh, we were discussing uh, for every student mm -hmm. to have like uh, an equity in a startup that they can come up with idea for startup they can come up come up with, or we can also create or maybe collect some ideas from uh, people, companies, spin-offs. Uh, companies etc etc so we have like this pool of companies uh, so sort of 
ideas or maybe startup. Uh, so when you come to our university, you like have I don't know five percent equity in three companies, right? And uh, you are building your project from the university for the companies that you have the equity. And also by uh, being a good student, uh, you uh, like collect uh, some uh, let's say it's like. Uh, it's equity, but it's not connected to a company, and you can use it to buy some equity on the company of your colleague that you think is, is, is uh, doing a I, good I, job. You know, maybe in the second, the third year, I, you I see that they're building up, and you can just chip in. Okay. Uh, and also, yeah, ninety-nine percent, ninety percent of these companies mm -hmm, will fail, but this ten percent that might emerge, right. they will be employers of their colleagues because they went through the same educational system there. They think in the same frame, etc., etc. So I, I don't know how this will work, but this is the say. kind of idea that it maybe fits better the market the challenge than challenge than guidance on how to solve the challenge, right? And I, I think if you make that happen, it could be just within mm -hmm. companies. It doesn't really matter. Any company is willing to invest in, hey, you're trying to find an absolute solution for me. Go. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, we, we, we have this program in the bootcamp. It's called Learning and Hiring Partnership. So we have companies that uh, now I have, uh, I'm in another company. I am just uh, as instructor, in racer, uh, uh, but I have this another company that is okay. operating in Bilivaka. Uh, so uh, the students from racer were doing two projects for us: redesign of the brand and UX for, uh, UXUI for the website. So we have this uh, partnership where the students are doing projects for the companies. The students, uh, they gain experience. They can put it in their portfolio and the CV, etc., etc. And it makes makes easier for them to apply for jobs. And the companies, they get uh, uh, also a project. But also uh, the, the, the fee yeah. is very small just to pay for mentors. Just yeah, so the companies sure get, uh, you know, cheap uh, labor, basically, but the students uh, gain experience, uh, like real-world experience, and so it's a win-win for both, both parties, basically. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. it's necessary, because yeah. for yeah, every not just cheap labor, right? Right? You, you also get to be connected to a way younger audience. They think differently, they use mobile apps right. differently. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what companies are looking for. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now we've fo mostly focused on education, uh, let's say high end yeah. education, and for job able uh, individuals. How would how how would this your marketable skills? You mean like? Well, what I mean is we're talking primarily about the challenges of uh, high education. What about like primary education of okay. kids? And like, how do you? Is there yeah room for what 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 needs to change there? Like Dario mentioned. Uh, for 65% of primary education is now the jobs are not mm -hmm. going to exist, are not existing yet. So, uh, does that level of education need transformation as well? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a very very different bit. You know, I, I'm not comfortable, uh, uh, you know, going there because that there are kids. Uh, for me, it's very, you know, uh, this is uh, uh, very easy to no, but should you uh, offer maybe when you, when you work programming with people that are already on, stuck in like there, uh, elementary school, cannot, like I don't know, in the sixth or seventh grade, like maybe build a basic to, uh, app or something. Yeah. Like, is that something that could be beneficial? Yeah, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Scratch, definitely, definitely. Scratch as a, as a concept and, and something like that. Yeah. I think that they, they need to to. Uh, maybe to make them think that way, you know, yeah. develop that, that, that skill. But I think this is a skill that is very, 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 uh, you know, tricky. And uh, but then there was this uh, this book uh, called "The Smartest Kids in the World" and how uh, did they become uh, like this? So uh, yeah. uh, the author is uh, like going in four countries that they have the best results on the PISA test. That's like international test that compares the results in yeah. most of the countries. So. South Korea was one of the examples. They are like uh, busting their kids' ass with learning. So they learn 24-7 and uh, the tutors that are after school, uh, like offering after school lessons, they are like paid in, they, they like, uh, uh, they have millions, millions on their accounts just from, from uh, uh, doing this as a side business. 
uh, but also the system there is that if you qualify for the state university, you will definitely have the, the appropriate work, will be paid, will be respected in the society, etc. etc. So they have this established mm -hmm. goal yeah, that, where, yes, you can pass your thing, I would uh, say that uh, learning, but there is a resource at the end of apply everywhere. this goal. Not one, one of everybody. Was, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. No, yeah, that, that was that was very interesting, very interesting example in mm -hmm, in Poland. So in Poland, the, the, the elementary schools, they have this uh, autonomy. So, you know, they uh, create their uh, curriculum, their, their, their tools for working, their textbooks, uh, the materials, etc., etc. And there's like a health comp healthy competition in the, in the, in the school. So if you do good, uh, a lot of the, uh, the students will want to uh, enroll in your uh, high school or elementary school, etc. You get more money uh, from the budget and you use this money to create even better, better uh, programs. So th that's one approach. Finland is, is something else. Finland invests a lot in the, in the, in the professors. So the most, uh, the most difficult uh, university to get enrolled to into uh, Finland is the, the university for teachers. Like they apply like ten thousand people and they are just uh, like one uh, thousand people right. can be part of the university. So they invest in the teacher. So these are different approach and but what, yeah, what you, what you just mentioned, I didn't like, touch the technology uh, that much, but I think um, that there are some different approaches that, that maybe South Korea. So South Korea has like the standard education. You have also after school education, which is. Uh, Essentially, if you compare it to what like uh, these non-standard education is, mm -hmm. uh, um, like Brainstorm is already achieving, so that there is something like that already exists. Uh, also, for younger uh, students, mm -hmm. Netherlands has uh, standard education. You often have like bubble schools or fund, yeah, which is but not when it comes to kids, my opinion is that you you should let education kids. Well, it can be uh, other other. Yeah, but then especially about uh, okay, uh, we can help you get better at, at elementary school, all right, or learn more already. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm actually thinking that's kind of flawed, and that was triggered by uh, Ricardo Sander, somewhat of a hero of mine. And he actually said, okay, what we're forgetting to teach kids is creativity, how to apply their creativity to solve problems. So one of the examples he, he's giving, and I, I, that's kind of stuck with me, he actually founded schools mm -hmm. all across the world by now, uh, and through yeah. uh, other people. And what they do is, okay, we're going to build a bike. How do you do that? Well, the wheel needs to be around. Oh, for that you need to know something. But then, right, you're solving problems, and while you're doing that, you're learning stuff. And I think that's way more interesting. If I look at my own kids, right, and yeah, okay, we're doing that. Oh, wow, why, why do I need to know that? And that's a yeah. typical question I keep presented. And I once answered to my daughter, okay, but then you can calculate how a rocket fly to Mars, right? Eventually. Yeah, yeah, but I don't want to do that. I like, yeah, I get yeah, it. So, like, the application of the knowledge that you have, it's not always visible. Mm -hmm. and that's also the problem that I had throughout my education. It's like, yeah, I'm studying all of this. Also, at university, you have a lot. So, the things that you, you were taught, I had no idea mm -hmm. how that was going to benefit me. Yeah. No, but, but I think that's a huge motivation. If you yeah. understand why you're learning something, yeah. you're solving a problem, that's great. Then, yeah. then you can apply it directly. Mm -hmm. At least in, in, in those specific moments, I can learn very fast. And if oh, I'm just being not you, there, anybody, I think. read this, yeah, yeah, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. When we were de developing our, our new uh, curricula for the, let's call it university, the applied studies, the, the faculty of applied studies, uh, our software engineer, we were discussing what should our KPIs be. So we were like, uh, should we uh, let see mm -hmm. how many people are dropping out, or how many people are getting jobs, or how many people are uh, having A's or B's or something? And at the end, uh, we thought that the most reasonable KPI is uh, how often we will uh, like switch off the the, the lamps and uh, just you know chase them chase them from the the, the classroom. Yeah. So we need to do something to make them solve problems. And we will be the ones that, that will okay. say, hey, so guys, it's enough yeah. for a day, enough learning, and we will switch them. So I like we that. get to switch the light. And how is the, uh, how is the government right. involved uh, in, 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 you know, a company like yours? Yeah. Because I know in, in the Netherlands, at least, uh, you know, there's a lot of rules and regulations that uh, come with, uh, with education. There's, a, of course, the freedom of education. So there is also a component in, in the educational system that is driven, you know, by the government, which is, you know, historically also a slow moving thing. 
uh, how does that fit uh, you know your your views yeah. back off <laughs> 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 when someone asks how the government can help, that the only answer is to stay aside. That's the, the most you can help. Yeah, that's <laughs> first. Yeah, but uh, yeah. I think it's a good thing that uh, in our country, you know, these uh, uh, old school professors, they have these big egos and like they're the new kids on the block and what can they teach them, you know. So it's good we are under the radar, but <laughs> we, we have like... Uh, more students that, uh, that, yep. that most of the universities that are in, in the tech business. So uh, the I started to you know go uh, in our yep. direction, but in general we had this 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 uh, maybe benefit of uh, being underestimated like an underdog, but uh, right. something that okay. that was good. Yeah. Uh, but when we applied for the, the the applied studies, we need to go through government uh, certification for the study. We managed to do it. Well, it also. You said the bureaucratic process and everything, but from yeah, you, now you have to go by the practice you are teaching. Do, do you also have professors from universities that were doing uh, courses there? Yeah, also, yeah. Only professor from university that was were in the same time uh, professionals mm -hmm. in the area. So there were some some uh, professors that were professors on the technical faculty that they have their own companies, their own projects, etc., etc. So the state state university for technology, you know the one you were a student, I guess there, uh, Pinky. It's a good one. It's it's a it's a good one. It started as a, as a pretty much enthusiastic. Uh, uh, program a lot of uh, professionals uh, were involved etc etc but along because the way they, instead of they, them changing the education the right? education but it probably also means they, you need to have you know, situation where people at least uh, be able to validate some kind of test at the end and, and that's the thing I, I see happening over and over again also in Holland right we have standardized testing doesn't matter what approach you take but you need to be able to fill in the standard test well we <laughs> We don't have standard tests in terms of that they uh, you you have the same test on the uh, on all of the universities. No, you develop your own. You will have to uh, you have some certain conditions you have to meet. So maybe sometimes you have this kind of uh, I don't know oral exam and sometimes you have practical exam, etc., etc. Uh, it's based on the curriculum you uh, apply with. Uh, uh, but we have this this dilemma at the beginning. We wanted to go to go totally unaccredited. So yes, three-year studies, it resembles the, the, the faculty, but we don't get the diploma. So the question was, what if someone asked, and what about the diploma, what do we say? We say, well, get the diploma. <laughs> so that was, our, <laughs> that was our answer. But we, we weren't brave enough to, to do it because the, the market is very traditional. And here the decision makers are not the yeah. children. Here the, the parents are the decision makers, and uh, the parents in our country are pretty, you know, the university is like, yeah. Yeah. It's something that you cannot change. It's a status because symbol. You are not doing it yourself. It's a status symbol. You, you for a while, yeah. 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 I still think it's an event yeah. the same, right? For a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. University yeah. 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 It just also doesn't mean anything. That's yeah. kind of like the problem. And, uh, you know, maybe to, to, to close off a bit, um, what, does the, what does the future hold for we you know, to do it. The education, uh, for Brainstore, or maybe for education in Macedonia, or maybe even education, you know, worldwide? Like, um, where do you see it be, you know, 15 years from now, basically? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely the, okay. the, the, the traditional education is under the pressure from the digital transformation, from the job market, from the big data, definitely. So the, the big data is something that uh, is used everywhere, everywhere to, to you know, just develop, change the, the, the industries. And the education is the basis right. of the digital transformation, but it's a part of that in the same time, same, same time is the least transformed industry. You know, it's the classroom system is like it was 300 years ago, you know. So I think a big changes are coming, it's definitely and inevitable. But I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I, I would really much yeah. like to see like this coexistence of the academia 
and the, 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 the industry. I think uh, combined with the new technologies, big data, we can, we can create a, a something yeah. that, that, that hasn't been done for centuries and it's a huge opportunity for the oh, human cat. I think that's a beautiful I, I want to be yeah, it's essentially the, 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 I think it's the, the education is the, one of the most problems. Problem yeah, that's the civilization. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. do you guys have any more questions for Dayan? No, I really like this conversation. Yeah. I think we could go on for hours and hours. Um, no, I, I think we need to stop. Um, I would like to continue this, uh, this at some point. And uh, you're probably going to ask me <laughs> for my tip of the day. or uh, Well, if you have one, then sure, but I wasn't I was, I was planning on. But, uh, oh, okay, I think that was coming next. Okay, no. if, you, if, you have, if you have a tip, then sure, man. No, I'll, uh, I'll post bo the, the YouTube uh, videos for uh, for the Ricardo Semmer story and uh, Sir Ken Robinson. I'll post them to this uh, podcast when we publish it. I, I think that's interesting. I think everyone should actually watch it. It's, it's, yeah. it's very entertaining to see how this all started and where it came from. Okay, great. Please. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Darian. I don't know. Do you have anything, uh, have anything to add or anything that you haven't that mentioned, mentioned that you? Some of the references. Yeah. Well, All right. Maybe you can link that. Yeah. No, it was pleasure. Awesome. Well, thank you for being on the show. And our uh, I want to thank, uh, of course, Panche as well. Thank you as well. Yeah, yeah, Sylvester, nice pleasure to nice having you uh, on the show. I think this time we talked a bit more than 3%. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was in a better vibe this time. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this is a topic I'm really passionate about. Yeah. But it's uh, a story for another time. So, uh, yeah. Thanks to the listener as well, of course, for listening in. As always, uh, if you have any suggestions or remarks or any questions about uh, you know, this subject for us or for Darian, uh, feel free to send us an email at uh, podcast at forscouts.nl or maybe a Twitter at forscouts. Uh, Darian, thanks again very much. Where can uh, people uh, learn more about uh, what it is that you guys are doing? Yeah, now uh, Brainster.io, okay. uh, there is uh, now an international uh, academy. Uh, there uh, now uh, we are working in Vienna, right. also in. Uh, uh, I hope soon in Berlin and in Tokyo. So brainstar.io. Awesome. You can uh, see all of the information. There are some of yeah. the presentations. We'll include the links uh, uh, in data uh, science and uh, check it out. Academy all right. Thanks UI. again, everyone, so and see you next time. Bye bye. To check it out, there are some questions. No problem. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of ScoutCast, Roasting Marshmallows, with your host, Rolf Sird. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit 4scouts.nl and on Twitter at 4scouts. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on ScoutCast, Roasting Marshmallows.